Welcome back. I am very excited about our next guest. I'm a huge fan of his work, which you would know if you're watching the show, and I've referenced it several times on various episodes. Gregory Wrightstone is a geologist, executive director of the CO2 Coalition, and author of the best-selling book, Inconvenient Facts, the Science That Al Gore Doesn't Want You to Know. Gregory, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having me. Thank, thank you for having me on. I got to tell you, though, I didn't set out to write a book like this. This really started as, a, as an exploration for the truth about climate change. Because I, I knew as a scientist and a geologist, some of what we were being told about climate change was just wrong. I suspected other things. And so I did my own personal search for the truth. And frankly, what I found angered me greatly. I saw an abuse of the scientific process. I saw things that are accepted as fact and reported unquestioned by the mainstream media going being presented as facts, when actually the science, the facts, and the data that I looked into disputed so many of these things that were being told. There is no climate crisis. There is no climate uh, emergency. What we see and what I see in my scientists that I work with at the CO2 Coalition, uh, some of the top scientists in the world working on this, we see an Earth and its ecosystems that are thriving and prospering. The vegetation is greening the Earth. Humanity and the human condition is improving. By almost every metric you look at, life and our ecosystems are getting better, not spiraling into some apocalyptic scenario. That wow, that's predict. a big statement. So you're saying there is no climate crisis. Period. Wow, period. Big statement. Period. A lot of these universities that are producing these studies and, and you know, ringing the alarm, if you will, are receiving a ton of money and it doesn't help them. If they go against what they're supposed to say, what they're supposed to recommend, they'll lose a lot of funding. So money and they profit. Will. Yeah, and, and basically what you're asking me, isn't it, why are they lying to us? Mm -hmm. That's really the underlying question. And I always turn that back on the host and on the audience. That every single person in this audience is just as qualified as I am to tell me why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. I, can I can present the science and facts that say, okay, this is what you're being told. And this is why it's wrong. Mm -hmm. But every single person here and in your audience watching this is just as qualified as I am. What is it, control? Is it money? Is it funding? It could be all those. Some people have said it's, it's destroying the capitalist system. Oh, I, I can tell you what's going on in the proposals are empowering China tremendously yeah. uh, by every regard. So of course. We've I mean, just traded our, 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 our energy dependence from Saudi Arabia when the week that Joe Biden was inaugurated was the first week since 1985 that we did not import one barrel of oil from Saudi Arabia. We just became energy independent from the Middle East. And what's he want to do? Turn this around to energy independence on China. I, of course, when I'm at the airport later, I'll be wearing my I love CO2, I love CO2. face mask. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay with a large carbon footprint because what we see is are the many benefits from increasing carbon dioxide. Let me, let me share with you my philosophy on climate change. It's one sentence. Everyone here watching should adopt it. We should use all of Earth's resources for the betterment of mankind and do it as good stewards. Use all of Earth's resources for the betterment of mankind and do it as good stewards. In one sentence. I agree with that. Her solutions is what I would call a solution in search of a problem. Because if we don't have a problem, we not only shouldn't spend three and a half trillion, we shouldn't spend one red cent right. to solve a non-existent crisis. And it's it, what they're planning right now, their solution is to drive everybody away from gas and fossil fuels. And their solution to that is to increase energy costs for everybody. What is your take on things in terms of the scientific community? Are you optimistic? Are you pessimistic? And where do we go from here? I'm pessimistic in terms of the scientific community. We don't. Um, we find that the only people that actually would propose things like this are either retired uh, or they're well enough along in their university career they're not going to be fired. We see scientists time after time being fired and run out of the scientific community. It takes a very, very brave scientist and a brave person to stand up to this, this whole community that's saying that there's a 97% consensus. And we find there aren't very many brave people in well, this community. Well, and I applaud those that do. Right, well then we're applauding you because you've been a brave, brave, brave scientist that's standing up.
I am telling you, you guys, this is such an easy read. It is so informative. You must, must, must read it. But also, if you know a child or somebody that's in school, this is the book that will get them started. Once you see it, the truth, you cannot unsee it. This is Al Gore's worst nightmare, Inconvenient Facts. Gregory, thank you so much for joining the show.